Welcome to the first in a two-part series about hormones in pregnancy. Um, this uh, screencast, we're going to concentrate on the first trimester. So I'm going to put that up there, trimester. And we're going to look at three um, hormones in particular. Uh, progesterone, which we've come across before. Estrogen. And a new hormone human chlorionic gonadotrophin, or HCG. Now, these hormones are produced, um, the progesterone and estrogen are produced by the mother initially from the corpus luteum, but HCG is produced by the, uh, the implanted embryo. So what's happened is the egg's been fertilised, it's made its way into the uterus and has now implanted itself into the endometrium. And there, safely tucked away, I'm going to draw it in, I'm going to call it little bean, so that's what it looks like to me. So you've got a little bean there. And the first thing that the embryo does is it starts to produce its chlorion. So that's a layer of cells. There's two layers of cells. The first layer of cells is the cytotrophoblast. I'm going to put that, write that in clearly. Cytotrophoblast. And then a second set of cells, which are invasive and start to actually produce little pools of maternal blood which can then uh, the fetus can use to transport oxygen and carbon dioxide and engage nutrients and these cells are called the syn cytotrophoblast so syn cytotrophoblast and they make up together the chlorion and the chlorion will become the placenta as the, feet, the embryo grows. So we're going to look really at the synthesized trophoblast because they produce, it's, they produce the first of these pregnancy hormones, HCG. And HCG levels rise very quickly in pregnancy, so uh, really important. They're used to detect pregnancy in the earliest, earliest stages. Um, interestingly, HCG is an analogue, and it's an analogue of luteinizing hormone and it performs the same function so luteinizing hormone is there to maintain and keep going the corpus luteum so I'm going to draw a little corpus luteum there and the corpus luteum has a one major function really it is to produce you know, two hormones progesterone Oh, I spelled that wrong, so I'll just rub that out. <laughs> so again, right. So produce progesterone and estrogen. I change the right colour. And the estrogens, because the more than one. And those two hormones work together, and amongst their many effects on the um, maternal body, the one which we're really interested in here is that they maintain. The endometrium. If for any reason those hormones, um, if any reason the, if any reason those hormones fail, either luteinizing hormone, estrogen, or progesterone, or all of them, then the endometrium will be shed in a period. Or if there's a fertilized um, embryo there, the, the mother will miscarry. So they're very important. So the role of HCG is to maintain the corpus luteum and it takes over from the anterior pituitary of the, form of the mother in, in that function. And the levels rise very quickly. So if I just draw a graph here, so there's a graph, and if we look here, call that the amount and, and time. This is the last menstrual period, which is zero on the on the gestational calendar, we have 12 weeks, 8 weeks, and 4 weeks. And then we see the egg is ovulated around uh, week 2, and if it is um, successfully fertilized, it will bed between, embed into the uh, endometrium within uh, 5 to 7 days, so roughly around week 3. And as soon as it's in bed, you start to see levels of HCG rise and they rise really quickly until they reach a peak around week nine when they start to fall away again. So 
this increasing levels of, uh, of, of uh, HCG, I'm about to put a luteinizing hormone there, and that we won't. Um, they are what's detected, and very quickly, levels in both urine and the mother's blood rise high enough to be detectable. And that is the basis of a pregnancy test, and that generally happens around week four. So that would be four weeks from the last menstrual period. So around the time of the first missed period, the HCG levels are detectable in a woman's urine. Um, and the woman wouldn't be able to test to see if she's pregnant or not. Interestingly, though, HCG levels fall after week nine. Um, and generally speaking, the placenta takes over full production um, let's put this in the placenta. Full production of all hormones around week 12, roughly, so the end of the first trimester. And so the, the requirement for the corpus luteum disappears. Uh, the, the placenta has taken over the production of progesterone and estrogens, and so HCG is not needed. So it falls away really quickly. So by the latter half of the second trimester and by the third trimester, those levels are so low that they become undetectable. Detectable. Um, and so you can't use a pregnancy test then to tell if a woman's pregnant in the latter part of her, uh, of her pregnancy. The other interesting use of HCG is as an analogue of luteinizing hormone because luteinizing hormone is, is a key um, contributor to the fertility of both men and women. So in female fertility, HCG can be used to initiate ovulation. So if a woman has got mature follicles and they are ready to ovulate but she's not producing enough LH of her own, then she can be given an injection of HCG and that will allow her to ovulate. And that often happens in um, IVF because it helps mature the, the, the eggs ready to be ovulated and then they are taken just before ovulation so that then they can be fertilised in, um, in, in vivo, in vitro, sorry. For men, LH, of course, is used, um, it stimulates the Leydig cells, so let's put that, Leydig cells, to produce testosterone. There's testosterone. Um, and testosterone helps stimulate spermatogenesis. And helps men the maturation of sperm. So in men who have sub who are subfertile because of problems of low sperm count, um, HCG can help them um, produce a higher level of viable sperm, and so are useful in the in, in treating male infertility. So you see, HCG is a very 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 important and interesting hormone. Well, this completes the first of the screencasts. I hope you come back and listen to the second one, which will be about the third trimester and initiation of birth. Thank you very much.